All right, so yeah, welcome to another session of our prophetic teachings. And today we are paying attention to prophetic ethics. That there are certain moral principles and codes that everyone in ministry, whether you're a bishop, whether you're a prophet, an apostle, you're a leader, or you're a Christian, that you need to guard yourselves with. And it is as important as the other things that I have taught. So today we are looking at prophetic ethics. Now, what's an ethic? An ethic is a moral principle or a moral guideline that governs a person's behavior or the conduct of their activity. So when we talk about ethics in the ministry, and as a prophet, you must understand that there are certain things that must govern your behavior. If not, you will find yourself doing things that would be a detriment to your ministry or your calling or your Christianity. There are so many people who are not governed by ethics so much that they have driven more people away from the ministry and Christianity than the devil himself. So everyone needs certain ethics, codes, morals that will guide their behavior. If not, people do things that are uncalled for and people do things that they don't have to do. Now for certain people, they are doing things only because they are ignorant about them and they do not know that they are wrong. That is where the ethics in ministry come in so that you can be guided and you can be corrected even as you are working in this prophetic journey. So, you must be guided and you must be governed. It's not everything that the Holy Spirit will necessarily tell you. But there are things that you need these guidelines to just be there to help you navigate through this journey. Now, the ethics of a believer must not just be man-made things or man-made laws or principles, but they must be heavenly. Number two, they must be biblical. Number three, they must be spiritual. So when we are talking about these prophetic ethics, they must be heavenly. They must be biblical, which means that their foundation must be established on the word of God. And we are saying that it doesn't only have to be biblical, they have to be spiritual because as we are going in this prophetic journey, and those of you who are in our school of ministry and are being trained, you must understand that as a prophet, there are certain things that the Holy Spirit will inspire you to do. That might not necessarily be found in the scriptures, but it is your personal education, your personal indoctrination, and your personal experience with God. For instance, the prophet is told to sleep on the left side of his body for a full year so that God can communicate something to him. Now, if you are in this dispensation now, after the Bible has been written, there are certain things that the Holy Spirit will tell you. For instance, there are certain meetings that the Holy Spirit will tell you clearly that don't go for these kind of meetings. Meetings where the name of the Lord is dishonored. Meetings where there are likely to be activities that can draw you into involve yourself. The Holy Spirit will tell you that don't go for these kind of meetings. These are codes these are ethics for instance some of you anytime you are preaching maybe the holy spirit will tell you that to wear this particular kind of a dress these are prophetic ethics i am giving you so that you are guided so these ethics must not only be heavenly they must not only be biblical but they must also be spiritual now with the spiritual things, I am not giving a license for people to enter into all manner of dubious, diabolic things in the name of spirituality. We are able to test the spirit. For instance, if you are telling people that as part of your code of ethics, if 
people are coming to you, they must pay you before they come to you. That is a wrong ministerial ethic. It is different from asking people to honor their grace. If you are asking them to pay you, then it is wrong. So, there are code of ethics that every believer, every pastor, every bishop and every teacher and every prophet must be guided by. So, they are heavenly, they are biblical, based on the word of God, and then they are spiritual. That means that God has inspired you that on this prophetic journey, these kind of things don't do them. These spiritual things, what happens is that a lot of times it's not as if it is necessarily a sin. For instance, if the Lord tells you that don't steal, it's not necessarily a spiritual code of ethic. It is more of a biblical code of ethic because these are things that are enshrined in the scriptures. So it doesn't necessarily have to be spiritual. But some of the spiritual code of ethics is that don't go and preach without praying for two hours. For instance, your personal dealing with God is that anytime you are going to minister, during that week you must find a time to fast and pray. Another one could be on the day that you are born. For instance, if you are born on a Monday, if you are born on a Tuesday or a Thursday or a Friday, the Holy Spirit has instructed you as a code of ethic for you personally that you must fast on that day. So when it comes to the spiritual codes of ethics, you would realize that these ones are personal ones. And I will share some of my personal ones even as we are going on a journey. One of them is that you must be, as a prophet, you must be careful the kind of shoes you wear. There are so many. The Bible speaks about that how lovely are the feet of those who carry the, the gospel. Your shoes are important. Jesus talks about when you get to a place and then did not receive your gospel, shake the dust off your feet. So the shoes you wear, especially if you're a prophet, is very important. And these some of you know some of these dealings are personal dealings that should not be made a doctrine. clothes that are torn in certain places certain shoes that are torn as a prophet there are certain things that God will inspire you not to do for instance whenever you are preaching your personal instruction or spiritual code of ethic is that you must wear a particular dress or you must always do an altar call at the end of your preaching to win souls so they must be heavenly they must be biblical based on the word solidly grounded in the word and then they must be spiritual you get to the places about our appearance our dressing our speech our thoughts and we'll get to all those so that by the end of this video you have enough inspiration from this video of prophetic ethics to guide your journey first corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 to 20 i want to believe that you have your bibles and you want to read with me the bible says that do you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God so you must come to a realization this is the foundation of our you know ethical teaching in the ministry or as a child of God that you must come to this place where you have realized or you realize that your body is the temple of God we are talking about prophetic ethics, ministerial ethics, Christian ethics. So the foundation is that you must realize that your body is the temple of God. It continues to say of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Which means that your body is no longer yours. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which means that whatever you will do with your body and I'll talk about going to places that you don't have to because if your body is the temple of God you must even be careful where you go to 
prophets don't go to just any place servants of God don't just go to any place children of God don't just go to any place unless under straight instructions so be guided so verse 19 to 20 says that don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God you do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price so you must honor God with your body you have been bought with not any price a high price so you are no longer yours which means that whatever you do whatever you think whatever you say however you appear you must do it in a way that honors God that's the basis of Christian ethics prophetic ethics what are you saying what are you thinking what are you doing where are you going does it bring honor to God ethics of the ministry and as important as prophetic quotes are life of the prophet activating the third eye creating a prophetic atmosphere as important as those things are these things are also important like i've said already so many people have left the ministry have left christianity because of ethical mistakes of men of god children of god prophets of god pastors bishops It is very important that you understand these things. The King James Version says that, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? So that's why across some of the continents, there's, there is a decay in the Christendom because you see certain renowned prophets, servants of God, people who confess Christ enter into all manner of activities, rebellious things, all manner of charlatans are in the ministry and they are causing more trouble to the prophetic ministry and the body of Christ than the devil himself. Men of God asking people to marry two, marry three, marry four. Asking people to bury this bury that sacrifice this sacrifice this person in the family listen whatever you do with your body it must honor God so there are two things that we want to look at with respect to ethics in the ministry number one prophetic ethics or Christian ethics helps the believer to make the right decision so these things that we are looking at it is going to help you to make the right decisions for yourself for your ministry for your family for your job for your career there are certain people that without these ethics they cannot make the right decision for instance jeremiah is a prophet from the mother's womb and god says that i have called you even from your mother's womb but this is the issue there are six things that you must follow that you must destroy you must uproot you must pull down you must build there are things that god told the prophet jeremiah in order to fulfill his ministry and every prophetic person there is certain you know a certain set of laws that god would give you for you to obey these are what we call as the spiritual ethics so if Jeremiah is going to be a good prophet or fulfill the assignment God has given to him, he must follow these ethics. So some of the prophets, you see that the Bible says that they do not have to touch alcohol. They do not have to let razor touch their hair because they are Levites unto Christ. So there are certain things that God is going to tell you in your prophetic journey that is for you alone. And for some of you that are listening to me already, there are things that God has told you that you, you should do. 
and you must be obedient to these things. These are your personal ethics in addition to the general biblical ethics we have. And we will run through some of the biblical ethics so that we are guided. So the first thing is that these ethics helps the believer to make the right decisions. So for instance, you know that you are not supposed to engage into adultery, fornication. When you have ethics about where you visit, how you visit, the time you visit, it helps you not to make the wrong decision because there are certain places once you get there there's no turning back so these ethics will help you prevent yourself from making certain mistakes in the ministry the second point is that these ethics assist people to determine their goals in life and help them realize or achieve those goals so these ethics will not only help you to determine the goal that the goal is to be a renowned prophet a pastor a leader a teacher a bishop but these codes would also help you to achieve them as limited as it sounds or as minor as it sounds it is very important and you have to pay attention to it these ethics would help you to realize and achieve those goals can you imagine that the prophets who have been told don't touch any alcohol don't cut your hair that they do not obey these instructions and they will still achieve their purposes no there are certain instructions that god will give you as a prophet as a child of god as a minister that you must follow it will help you to achieve your purpose sometimes when god speaks to us he doesn't tell us the purpose of those things that he's telling us to obey but i am telling you that with respect to these prophetic ethics ministerial ethics or christian ethics they would help you in the long run to achieve and realize those goals that god has given you has god given you a vision there should be ethics surrounding that vision there is no vision that will just happen without your input sometimes you have to spend hours in prayer other people are sleeping but you are praying other people are partying but you are studying other people are mingling with people but you have been constrained by the holy spirit not to attend such a program not to fellowship with certain people that is your personal training with the holy spirit and as a prophetic person you must be sensitive enough to know that this is God dealing with you for the sake of the vision that he has given you you find prophets of old in caves wildernesses places that an abnormal circumstance you would not want to be but they are there for the sake of the vision that is ahead so number one these ethics will help the believer or the prophet to make the right decisions not only that number two these ethics would help the believer to not only determine the goal or the vision for their life but to realize them and achieve them i pray for you may you achieve your goals in the name of jesus as you set boundaries as you set things to govern you that you live right i pray for you in the name of jesus that may god keep you in the mighty name of jesus may you realize your goals by these quotes you are about to learn may you realize your goals in the mighty name of jesus leviticus chapter 11 verses 45 for i am the lord your god you shall therefore consecrate yourselves i've thought you already and even as we've read in the scriptures that your no, the foundation of christian ethics is that your body is not yours you can't behave anyhow you can't speak anyhow you can't dress anyhow we are talking about ethics for the ministry ethics for the ministry Leviticus chapter 11 verses 44 to 45 we are reading again for I am the Lord your God you shall therefore consecrate yourself now let me in the scriptures there are three things that we have to look at with respect to ethics in the ministry three things that God wants us to pay attention to then these things are what he has communicated through his scriptures number one is his will number two his mind 
Number three, his character or his nature. Can we take it up again? Number one, his will. Number two, his mind. Number three, his character or his nature. Every prophet must understand this. Every child of God must understand this. That God is communicating his will. This will help you to form your ethics for your ministry. His will, his mind, his character. So if we go back to Leviticus chapter 11 verses 44, it says that, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourself. Listen, as a prophet, there are times that you have to consecrate yourself from the noise, from the destruction, from the pollution. Sometimes once a year, twice a month, twice a year, once a week, every four months, every three months, it depends on you. You must spend time where you are consecrating yourself. God, whatever I have contacted that has contaminated my spirit, you pray that God should wash you, purge you. And you do these things with fasting, prayer, studying of the word of God. I have taught you how to meditate. If you have not watched that, you have to go and then watch it. How to meditate. Meditation, like I've taught you already, helps you clear your spirit of noise. He says that, you shall consecrate yourselves. So many prophets, men of God, leaders who are out there, who have not consecrated themselves. They have worked in some behavior, some filthy life that they shouldn't work in. And they are working under the deception of grace. Listen, every prophet in the Bible is referred to as a holy prophet or a holy man of God. You must stay pure. There are certain things that you cannot be permitted to do. Look across some of the African countries, some of the European countries, some of the, 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 you know, the countries that are even in South America, and you see a decay in the body of Christ. People doing all manner of things that they should not do. They are into lottery, they are into scam, they are into women, they are into alcohol, but may the Lord bring a purging in the name of Jesus. Listen, as you are listening, Listen to me, as important as the prophetic quotes are, you must stay pure. You must have ethics. You must be guided by certain principles. You must be guided. I've seen how a lack of discipline and principles have wasted and destroyed promising ministries, promising servants of God, promising children of God. No discipline, no ethics, no moral codes or guidelines, and they have just been wasted. And I'll show you how the devil traps people who do not have moral ethics, prophetic ethics. You have to guide yourself. He says that, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Listen, you have to live a holy life. The oil of the apocrypha can stink with flies. So listen, you have to live holy. You can't continue living in sin in the name of grace abounds. You have to live holy. For I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any creeping thing that creeps on the earth. For I am the Lord who brings you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Listen, there are certain things that you have to keep yourself away from. I say this thing that there are seven for what we are doing now. There are more than seven, but there are seven entry points that can contaminate the soul and the spirit of a person. This is a prophetic teaching. There are about seven for this teaching's sake because there are more. For instance, music is the only thing that can enter your spirit without permission. That's why if you feed yourself with a certain kind of music, sometimes before you realize you are tapping to that music or you are grooving to that music, and I've taught you that they are, and these points are what I've taught you, the eye gates, the ear gates, the, the mouth, 
the nose, the temple, the top of your head, the middle of your palm. That's why there are people who do palm mystery. And these are spiritual principles that work. So as a prophet, as a child of God, as a bishop, you must make sure that you have these ethics. And God is saying in Leviticus that there are certain things that you must keep your way from them. Stay away from these things. And I've told you that there are certain things that God will tell you personally that this thing, stay away from it. Some of you, God will tell you that anything that has to do with quarreling, bitterness, anger, stay away from it. Anything that has to do with dishonor, stay away from it. You need ethics that will guard you. So we've talked about the will, the mind, and the character. The will, the mind, and the character. The next scripture is still on the will of God. So we have seen in Leviticus that God is communicating his will for us. That we are consecrated and then we live holy. Not only that, we abstain from certain things. Some of you, the things that you watch, the things that you listen to can contaminate you so much that your prophetic senses become numb and dull. Personally, there are certain things that if I watch, it contaminates my spirit so much. It numbs my hearing and my seeing. And for if you're a prophetic person, this will be correct also in your life. And some of you are here, you know that there are certain things that you hear or certain arguments or conversations. Once you get into them, you see that all of a sudden you, your spirit man feels down. Your sharpness is now blunt. So the will of God is that you are consecrated. You live holy. Abstain from certain things. I pray for you. May the oil of holiness and consecration be released upon your life. In the name of Jesus. May the oil of consecration be released upon your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 verses 48. The Bible says that therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. So when we are talking about these codes, these ethics, it is to make you perfect. The actual translation is mature. To make you mature, even as your father is. So there are certain things that when we look at you, there are certain behaviors, there are certain temperaments, there are certain activities when we look at you, we should be able to tell that you are as perfect as God wants you to be. The way you talk, the way you think, the way you address things, the way you behave outside, the way you behave in the church. There are certain things that when we look at you, we should be able to tell that this person is living a perfect and a mature life. Prophetic ethics, Christian ethics. This is a teaching that is important for everybody in the ministry and every child of God. So that is the mind. So the mind is the next thing that we have to pay attention to. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 16. Because we have looked at the will, God has a will for us. And we must obey that will. Then there is a mind. Now, what is the mind? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. He said that for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. So part of knowing the mind of God is for your instruction. So you are not called into the prophetic ministry or into the ministry as a child of God without any instructions or any guideline. Anyone who does that is a recipe for destruction. Very soon, there will be calamity in your life, in your ministry because there are no guiding principles. But as we are learning today, for the mind, he says that in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? 
any man of God, any prophetic person, any bishop, any person say that from I do what I want, nobody instructs me. You you are you are very close to your destruction. And that's why some of you you need your father's mentors, spiritual authorities that can guide you and instruct you. Don't say that you are on you don't respond to anyone. No, that is wrong. That is very wrong. You need people who give you guidelines, who will be there to pray for you, who you can talk to that, I am struggling with this thing. I am struggling with this. Then they can help you and pray with you and give you godly counsel. The Bible says we should confess our sins to one another. People that are spiritual, that can pray for you. And I recommend your authorities. If you have submitted to my ministry and you are steady you are being mentored here there are certain things that you would have to come clean about and say that i am struggling with this i need help how can i how can i come out of this there are certain behaviors certain addictions certain things that you need help to come out of you need instructions about it and he says that who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him that god will use certain people to instruct you especially fathers mentors inspirations but we have the mind of Christ as we end the verse 16 you have the mind of Christ whatever you are doing you must do it with the mind of Christ so we've spoken about the will we've spoken about the mind now we are speaking about the character or the nature Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says that for I am the Lord and I do not change Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. God says what? He does not change. For some of you who today, you believe in prayer, you believe in tithe, you believe in fasting, you believe in honor, you believe in giving, you believe in, in the prophetic. And then the next time we hear of you, you are speaking against these same things that built you up. May the Lord have mercy on us. God says that he changeth not. So if God says that you should fast, then he is not changing for you or for any country. Prophetic ethics. He's not changing for you. And you must understand these things. You must understand these things. He says that he changeth not. God's commandment or God's will about you for staying holy, pure, will not change for you. You have to stay pure. You have to stay consecrated. God's will about giving, about honor, about fasting, about praying will not change. He changeth not. That is why you must also not change. You must know the nature and the character of the God that you serve. We must know the character of Christ. Not only his will, not only his mind, but his character. So, through the scriptures, God has communicated these things to us. Through his word, he has communicated these things to us. So, every ethic must be founded on the scripture even as i've mentioned already in the prophetic ministry you must be solid on the word one of the prophetic words the lord gave me this year is that the a season is coming where the the prophetic and the word will have to go hand in hand that the prophets will be have will, 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 will be teachers of the word they have to be apt to teach can't say you are all you know is to prophesy no word basis no the will the mind and the character of god is based on his word that's why there are so many people who are gifted but when you check their character and look across some of the countries you see it renowned men of god who are gifted by their character they are into one scam one gambling issue to another marital issue to another ministry issue listen your character is as important as your gifts write it somewhere your character is as important as your gifting in the ministry 
it is. And I pray for you. Stand pure. Stand pure. As we are rounding up, I'm going to look at five things that you must pay attention to as you are forming your ethics for ministry or for your Christian life. Number one, watch the places you go to. Reverend Isuranaba taught us in a pastor's meeting, conference, that when you are going somewhere as a pastor to pray, advise, counsel, or teach the word, don't do it in a very enclosed place with the person of the opposite sex. And for our dispensation now, we would even want to advise of the same sex for scandal's sake. Many people's ministry have been destroyed because of scandals. There's a testimony about Archbishop Benson Idahosa when he was in a hotel and they had planted a woman in his cabinet. And when he got there, he was just praying, praying, praying. The person just started shouting, fire, fire, fire. What would have happened if the man of God didn't pray and he was just in this place with this woman and they caused a scandal? What has destroyed the ministry, apart from the devil, is scandals. Lack of prophetic etiquette, lack of Christian etiquette. You need these ethics. They would help you to achieve that vision the Lord has given you. So, Reverend Sudanaba advises that whenever you are going, you go with someone else. At least you must go with someone. If it's going to be an enclosed place, the person where the person is staying, the person is there alone. It's just a single room. Don't go there alone. It shouldn't be a place that's also closed and closed. The doors or the windows should be opened or something. So, watch the places you go to. You are going to certain places. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will convict you, don't go there. The only problem is that sometimes people don't listen and they still go. And before they realize, there's an issue. It is not pride. It's not being full of yourself. They are ethical codes that will help you to sustain yourself in the ministry. So there are certain places. If there's a meeting, make sure that it's an open place. People don't have to be there to be listening to what you are saying necessarily, but it should be an open place where, you know, people can easily have access to the place. So, be careful the places you go to. There are certain meetings or certain places that, of course, it will just have to be you, but the place will have to be open enough. People should be able to access the place. The next thing is dressing. And this is so important. Dressing. Child of God. Man of God. Woman of God. Be modest. I'll say it again. Be modest. As a child of God, as a servant of God, as a prophet. Like we just read in the first scripture. That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God dwells in you. Which means that your body is a symbol or it's a representation of God. So be modest. Which means the dresses you wear. You can appear shabbily dressed as a prophet of God. You can appear shabbily dressed. Present yourself well. When people look at you, they should be able to respect you. If people don't respect you, they cannot pay attention to your anointing. The kind of dresses you wear be presentable don't expose certain parts of your body some of you who like wearing chains rings there's no issue with that if you are wearing one just be modest in it because sometimes like i've taught you in creating a prophetic atmosphere sometimes you need these things to create a prophetic atmosphere sometimes it's a crucifix sometimes it is a an eagle or a dove, something that represents your ministry, that is fine, but there shouldn't be an excess of it. When five chains, ten chains, three chains, four, for what exactly? Your body is the temple of the living God. Be modest. Be modest. Be modest. Child of God, you have to be modest. 
you have to be modest. Some can wear five rings, ten rings. You have to be modest. The way you appear, your hairstyle, let it be modest. The way you dress, sometimes even the perfume, say, it shouldn't be too strong that the attention is now taken from the word of God, Jesus Christ, and now the attention is you. That affects also the dress, not only the perfume, the dressing, everything. Be modest. Our focus is Christ. People want to see Christ. So be modest. Your haircut, the hair that you are you are trying to fix, whatever it is, it's a wig, whatever it is you are putting on, you know, be present. You are representing Christ. It is not a reason. I'm not advocating for anyone to dress shabbily. No, because you are representing the King of Kings. You must you must present yourself well. People should look at you and respect you, but there shouldn't be excess of that. Oh man of chains, left, right, center rings 5 10 and from these things that i've spoken to you we can look at someone who has the heart for god and by their actions their behavior we can tell if they are really into this for themselves or for god some kind of haircuts you must stay away from them these things are not necessarily saints in the bible but you must be modest. You are representing someone. And don't let what you represent become an offense. For instance, if you must be sensitive to the people you are ministering to. If you are going to minister in a country like maybe um, a country that, um, maybe an African country, let's say Ghana, and you are coming from Scotland, in your country, men can wear skirts. But in this country, it, is, it can be an offense. To wear skirt. So even though that is okay, because of the people you are going to minister to, you must be presentable, you must be modest, and you must be acceptable for the sake of the people so they can receive your word. So how you dress is important. The people you are going to speak to. Paul said that for the Gentiles, I became a Gentile. For the babies, I became a baby. So you must know who you are ministering to. These are ethics of the ministry, prophetic ethics that should help you. The shoes that you wear. And I've told you already how, you know, as a prophet, you must even be careful the kind of clothes you wear, the kind of dresses you wear. And most of those things are personal dealings and training with the holy spirit and you must be attentive to them holy spirit what do you want me to do what do you want you what don't you want me to do the next thing we want to look at is speech speech child of god listen to the way you talk the kind of words you use don't use vile words don't use profane words don't use profane words in your preaching, in your prophetic presentation, on the altar, wherever you are, abstain from words that bring a disdain and a stain on the image of Christ. How do you speak? There are so many people gifted, but they do not know how to speak. The way they talk is not cultured. You must know how to speak. It's part of the ethics. You must know how to speak. Nathan, a prophet, receives a prophetic word from God and is going to speak to David because David has done something. He has taken the wife of one and killed the husband. And God is angry. God is bringing his judgment. He tells Nathan, a prophet. But when Nathan, the prophet, is going, he coins it in a way that it is not abusive to the king. He says that a man who has thousand sheep and then another one who has only one sheep, the one with the thousand sheep goes to take the only one that the man has. He's presented it in a way. So it is important how you speak. When you are counseling people, how you speak. When you are advising. That's why you can't use the anointing to disrespect people. You can't use the anointing 
to speak anyhow and that's the problem of some of the some people in the ministry you must know how to speak don't say because you're anointed you talk anyhow there are certain things that of course it will be hard it will be hard that will come but we are we are not talking about those we are talking about things that are profane and that are vile abstain from those things the, the, the words that you speak the bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue the things that you say like we are learning from nathaniel nathan the prophet there are sometimes certain things that god will show you and then even as he has shown you maybe maybe death or accident or disease or a calamity or disappointment but then god also begins to speak to you what he's about to do concerning the situation and restoration is bringing salvation so in that sometimes as a prophet and this is prophetic wisdom sometimes you don't even necessarily have to go into details about these things that what you saw and the car the color like sometimes you have to do that but sometimes you don't have to do that because you might bring in more fear than restoration you must be more interested in what god is about to do than what the devil has done already you must you must you must be more interested in what god is about to do so sometimes you can see the things very bad very evil but you can just brush over it and then go to what god is about to do but sometimes you have to go into details and then let the person understand what is happening so your speech is very important the next thing is your thoughts and we've spoken about how the will the mind and then the character the nature of god is essential when it comes to the ethics so your thoughts pattern and when it comes to this one a lot of people can hide it from you know humans but your thought pattern can you hide it from god your thought pattern so where you go to how you dress how you talk how you think the final one is your actions your behaviors your manners listen as a child of god a prophet of god there are certain things you shouldn't be doing picking your nose there's certain behavior certain characters that you, you don't have to do you are representing god you are representing god your actions some of you can just insult jump from here here all over the place there's there is no composure in the way you behave when you're among people and this will affect your ministry too many jokes here and there there's no problem with joking but you must be careful where you joke how you joke i'm teaching you ethics your actions some of the actions that you want to go and bath someone in a certain river you want to you are asking someone to bring blue or some of the actions are not of god so we can look at all these five things i have just spoken about now and tell whether you are in it for god or you are in it for yourself and we can even tell by these things whether you are a genuine prophet or not the bible says that it is by their fruits that we will know them is by your fruit don't say it is it's in your heart it is a relationship it is between you and god no we can look at these things the places you go what you do there your dressing how you represent god your speech your thought pattern your actions the things you do and know whether you you are representing god or not and for a lot of people they are into these things they are into these errors because they have not been taught that is why i am bringing this teaching to you it's part of your prophetic journey it's important for your prophetic journey it is important for your prophetic journey. It is important for your prophetic journey. I pray for you. May God sustain you. May God sustain you in this prophetic journey. May God sustain you in this prophetic journey. As many as are saying amen, may God sustain you in this prophetic journey. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I strongly believe that you are studying something. You are learning something. 
that this will help you in your prophetic journey. It's not all about the prophetic codes, activating of a third eye, creating a prophetic atmosphere, um, who is a prophet, how to prophesy. As important as those things are, these things are also important. They are important. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says that, Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside. I'll read it again. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. It says that, Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside. See how Paul is paying attention to having a good report, a good testimony. Not to those who are in church, but those who are outside. So it is important what people think about you in the family. Of course, if it is not what you have caused yourself, that is fine. But things that you are doing that is bringing a shame and a disrepute to the body of Christ. You must be careful about those things. What people think about you in the family, in the neighborhood, what do they think about you? What is your behavior, your character? What do they say about you? And Paul is saying first in First Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, is that moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Which means that when people do not have a good testimony, their dressing, speech, thought, their character, their actions, the places they go, if there is not a good testimony, they can fall into a reproach and the snare of the enemy. That's why the devil has snared a lot of gifted ministries, gifted servants of God, because they did not lack the, did not lack the discipline. They did not have the, the boundaries and the guidelines for the prophetic ministry. As a prophet, it's not everywhere you eat. It's not everywhere you just even go and sit. I'm telling you this as a prophet. It's not everywhere you just go down and just sit down and just start talking with everybody. No. It's not just anywhere that you just eat. You, you, listen, you need spiritual eyes to be open to know these things. But per adventure, you have not seen some of these things. We are teaching you so that you use them as guidelines. There are certain places that your spirit man will not be comfortable. It means that you don't have to be there. You don't have to be there. So have a good report. Not only in the church, outside the church. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 39 and all these have obtained a good testimony through faith all these have obtained a good testimony talking about the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 and he said that they did not even receive the promise but even though this people did not receive the promise like we have received the promise and this promise is talking about eternal life the gift of Christ even though they had not they had obtained a good report listen it is important what people think about you have a good report you don't behave anyhow man of god prophet of god you cannot just behave anyhow you cannot just talk anyhow you cannot just speak about people insult be be so bitter the way you speak you you must be you must be cultured in the way you speak have a good report and i pray for you from today have a good report in the name of jesus philippians chapter 4 verse 8 the bible says that finally brethren Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I've taught you how to meditate. If you have not watched that video, go and watch it. How to meditate to clear your spirit of noise to hear god and he's saying that whatever things are true number one whatever things are noble i've told you be be modest be noble number three whatever things are just number four whatever things are pure number five whatever things are lovely number six whatever things are of a good report listen this is all about ministerial or prophetic ethics just so that 
what people think about you say about you is of a good report the bible is keen about us having a good report as i've told you that so many people have driven away people from church from their ministry from christianity because of character issues behavioral issues ethical issues you can be gifted and have these issues that's why we are teaching this why you study them and then you are guided draw some boundaries you can be gifted be a seer be a hearer and still have issues with these things our final scripture and then we'll close for today third john chapter 1 verses 12 demetrius has a good testimony from all my god he said that demetrius has a good testimony from all and this we are going to pray this prayer before we go and i want you to put your name there don't say that it doesn't matter what people think about me i am anointed no you are wrong it doesn't matter what people are saying about me you cannot just behave anyhow and there's a whole mess there's a whole chaos and think that that is all no that is not all is that demetrius has a good testimony from all and listen in this prayer i want you to put your name there and it's a declaration and some of you know you have to write it because whatever you hear me say there's a percentage you can retain but whatever you write you increase the percentage you retain whatever you repeat you increase the percentage you retain so some of you I want you to declare it over your life if your name is Daniel you say Daniel has a good testimony from all Sarah has a good testimony from all Anna has a good testimony from all Kwame has a good testimony from all. Koza has a good testimony from all. And some of you, I want to see you even typing it in the comments. As you are typing it, it is staying in your spirit. You are typing it, adding your name. Some of you want to add your name, Prophet. Daniel, Prophet. Anna, whatever name you want to use. And you are writing, say that Prophet Anna, Prophet Daniel has a good testimony from all. And I, and I declare over your life, even as you are typing it, as you are saying it to yourself, that may you have a good testimony from all. And it continues to say that, and from the truth itself, let me read the whole scripture again. It says that Demetrius has a good testimony from all, and from the truth itself, and we also bear witness so john the revelator is saying that we bear witness that he has a good testimony so those of you that have submitted to this ministry have been mentored by this ministry it is important what testimony we have about you what testimony i have about you those who are sons and daughters you are living in one or the other you have to sometimes come clean and say i am struggling with this help me you you are you are living right you have a good testimony from all and then john the apostle is commending this guy demetrius and say that he has a good testimony and we also bear witness as your spiritual father as a spiritual mentor what testimony what report do i have about you it's important so you are seeing here in this scripture that's not only it's between me and god it's between me and god to no, know you must submit to someone and they must be able to have a good report, a good testimony about you. Amen. In the next 30 seconds, pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. May I have a good testimony. May I have a good testimony. Pray for yourself. And I speak over your life. May you bring glory to your God. May your body bring honor to God. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 20. It says that so you must honor God with your body. May you bring honor to God. In this prophetic journey, may you bring honor to God. May you be the reason why people want to know God more. Just not by your gifts, but by your character, your behavior. Laugh with people. Smile with people. Be nice to people. Be a helper. I pray for you. 
may you honor God with your body. In Jesus' name, amen. A few announcements before we go. There are some of the books that will be in the description that you can go and then purchase. These are, these are books that are prescribed for those who are in the school of ministry. Why dream? It's a book on you know, seeing, dreaming. And then it has prophetic symbols and tokens. One guy from our Bible school was asking that, how do you know what the number one means, the number eight means, what this um, symbol means? It is good for you. So some of you have to purchase these books. The link will be in the description. Purchase them. And then there's a new book that we are launching this Saturday. And as many of you that are in Ghana, we encourage you to be here. It's going to be powerful prophecies, power, miracles, healing, testimonies. The book is on power. So that evening is going to be full of power and miracles. I invite you all personally, even as you are listening, I invite you to join me even as we delve into these things. The link to buy the book will also be in the description. You can purchase the book. And those who want to join our school of ministry, you know, the link will also be there. You can purchase it. You can join the school of ministry and be trained as a prophet. There are so many testimonies coming in from different people all over the world. Testimonies of things. Their eyes being open, ears being open. So buy the book, study them watch the videos over and over again if you can make it for the lunch that would be amazing i want to talk to you pray with you speak to you join the prophetic school if you want to be trained as a prophet join the prophetic school and then on monday finally on monday our final announcement is that we are doing our prophetic activation get a bottle of oil at least get a bottle of oil if you have a mantle a crucifix a cross a chain whatever it is that you want to use as a mantle in your ministry or for yourself we are we are bringing it and we are praying over them also write your name on a white piece of paper write your name on a white piece of paper so you have an anointing oil write your full name on a piece of paper it's for a prophetic activation and then any other thing that you want, if it's a prayer mantle you want to use as a mantle, whatever, if it's a, whatever you want to use as a mantle, you get it and then we provide. If you can get a communion, a set of communion, also get it for the prophetic activation. Is that okay? So at least you have these things, the anointing oil and then the set of communion. You should have it for the prophetic activation. Is that okay? So God bless you. See you on Monday 8th August. And I've told you all that everyone is supposed to get a prophetic seed, you know, that you are sowing into your ministry. That is important for the prophetic activation also. And, and I said that because it's a prophetic activation, it's not, it's not just it's a prophetic activation, you must sacrifice something you have never done before. It must be a painful sacrifice. Some, you see, sometimes people sacrifice all kinds of things. I've told you already properties and i'm not saying that do that anything that you do you must be led don't do it because someone has said that you should do it or, or it must be because you are inspired to do it or you are led to do that people say thousands of dollars cars or one of things you must be led to do it elijah sacrificed his business of cattle and things you must be led to do it be led to do it and it might be something that will touch your spirit man something that you can do it and then you feel it in your spirit man and something that will touch the heart of the prophet for him to be able to activate i've told you this thing before that sometimes when you learn all the codes and they are not working or they are working to this level the next thing to do is for you to sacrifice into the ministry of the one who is mentoring you teaching you and activating you is that okay so god bless you see you at the lunch or see you on Monday for the prophetic activation. You can invite friends. Let us pray in Jesus' name. So, Amen. we hope that you've been blessed by this. And this is a wonderful opportunity to give your life to Christ if you haven't done so. And so, if you want to give your life to Christ, send us a message via the number on WhatsApp or send us a message on Facebook at Pastor Selim. If you want and are in need of prayers and counseling, it is on the same platforms. Let us know and we'll be there to pray for you. God bless you and see you next time.